Hey everybody, and welcome to another Interstellar mod there. This is part one of the Space 1999 Warhawk build. Okay, for the first thing I'm going to do is start on the main uh, fuselage here. And uh, actually the first step I did do was to wash all the parts in detergent. And I used a toothbrush to kind of scrub along um, the surface areas. And uh, gave them time enough to dry. And now we have to address the... Uh, surface imperfections that we talked about here before. So you can see the surface is fairly rough here. I'm going to have to sand a lot of those uh, areas down and fill in some of these holes. I already started on wit on this uh, section here. You can see it's a bit smoother than the other side. And um, also use my scribing tool to uh, just enhance some of the lines here. And, um, and I've done some on the bottom section as well. So I'm going to keep at it and I will show you here my progress shortly. So I have a little bit more light here uh, to show you some stuff with uh, this morning. So uh, I'm continuing to work with uh, smoothing over the surface of this resin kit here. And um, as I pointed out, you know, there are a number of different surface imperfections that result from pouring the resin into the mold and taking it out. Um, you have these little bubbles that create these little divots and things like that on the uh, surface. So that's what I'm doing now is um, using putty to fill in those areas and uh, lightly sanding them and then putting a little bit more until we get a smoother surface here. So the putty I'm using is Tamiya's uh, white putty here and just applying some into these little divots and uh, you can see I've already started on the process in a number of areas here. And I'm not sure I'll be able to completely uh, get rid of every single little defect obviously. I'll certainly try my best. Um, you also see these irregularities here I'm trying to smooth over as well. Um, so I will continue to work at that. Okay so one area I've been working with is this area here and here and these panels um, have a lot of surface defects to them so I thought I would try uh, to see what would happen if I cut out some thin styrene plastic and created some new panels so that's what I'm doing here and I think that's what I'm gonna do so um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with these because uh, these were cut out uh, to match the uh, length and width of the panels and uh, glue them into place and you can see they will be uh, provide a much smoother surface here than the original paneling. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, just to improve the appearance here and uh, some of the irregularity excuse me some of the irregularity here uh, can be dealt with with um, I think a strip of styrene that would go there as well. So I'm going to give that a shot. Let's just see what happens. Okay, so the panels have been installed now, and I think they look much better than the original detailing. Uh, covers up the irregularities fairly well. What I did, again, was just uh, cut this uh, styrene plastic here. Uh, this is fairly thin stuff. It's like working with paper. Um, and cut it to the length uh, of the uh, panels. And then I used my scribing tool to create some of the lines here. And so on this side, I have two panels uh, glued into place, and I have... Uh, these others glued on this side as well. And then to complete it, um, I'm going to go ahead and move forward with uh, gluing this strip styrene here, uh, just along the borders here, uh, just to kind of make it look a little bit better there. And then I'll also take a strip and glue it on this side to cover all this irregularity here as well. All right, guys, just to catch you up here, I um, wanted to show you, first of all, I got some pictures online here of a Warhawk that was built by Jim Small. And so I'm going to be using this as our guide here when it comes to painting and uh, applying some other surface detailing there. And uh, these are shots of the original studio model, so I'm using these as a guide as well. And just to get you caught up here now, um, I've been making some progress here. First of all, on the fuselage, um, I've attached this section now here, and I've continued to use uh, putty uh, to fill in all the uh, gaps uh, all along the edges there. And uh, this is not glued into place just yet, but um, what I think I may do is end up uh, gluing some styrene plastic along here just to hide this gap, because there's definitely a sizable gap there. Okay, the other thing I've done was to cut out the windows in the cockpit area, and this was accomplished by using my Dremel. Uh, these are the two bits I used for that. I'm not sure I can get this in focus, but one is kind of circular with some teeth at the top there, and then the other one was this pointed uh, bit here. And um, the resin that was uh, included with the kit was um, meant to be cut out. It wasn't very regular anyway, so uh, now the question is what to do from here. Uh, I have decided to go ahead and build out a cockpit, so I'm going to take some styrene plastic, create a back wall. I purchased some uh, 148 scale pilot figures off of eBay, so I'll use those figures inside the cockpit there. 
Now one tool that I have found helpful uh, in this project is actually this uh, tool made here by Tamiya. It's actually made to be a paint stirrer. Uh, you can see it has a spoon at one end and a flat blade at the other. However, I've been using it to apply putty and it's been very, very helpful. So I no doubt they make things uh, for that purpose, but I just happen to have this handy. Let me just show you how I was able to fill in the holes. All right, so say for example, we wanted to fill in these areas here. Uh, so what you do is you just take your uh, spoon attachment here and I just put it on this side like so. And then uh, you can just take it and um, basically squish it right into the hole there, like that. And then you take the flat end and you just start smoothing it over. Okay. And sometimes the hardest thing is to get the uh, putty into small holes like this. And again, this is just one way I have found it has made it easy to do that. Okay, it usually works a little more smoother than this. It's just this kind of a weird angle to do this from. But anyway, you kind of get the picture here. So the tool is also helpful with uh, rebuilding areas. And what I mean by that is this area in particular had a big uh, bubble here. And uh, so there's a fairly large opening there. I was able to take the tool and uh, squeeze the putty in there and then the flat side to smooth it over. And um, after doing that several times, you can see it's rebuilt the area fairly well here. And I still probably gonna do one more uh, application. Okay guys, so I just wanted to show you what I'm up to here now. I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with lighting the command module. And in order to do that, we have to make the command module detachable. So uh, I'm proceeding then with installing some magnets. There'll be four here and four adjoining magnets on the main body here. And um, that will allow the uh, command module to be removed easily so you have access to the switch and the battery. So in terms of lighting the command module, I'm not gonna uh, put a really bright light. So you don't really need much light in here. It's gonna be a small space. So uh, I'll probably install a three millimeter um, LED that's gonna be sitting somewhere around here. Uh, I still have to figure out a way to do that. Um, but uh, that'll shine up into the pilots. As I mentioned, I'm gonna be installing uh, a back wall here with the pilots glued to it. So that's the plan. I'm gonna go ahead then and move forward with installing the rest of the magnets. All I'm doing here is just taking a uh, two drill bits, uh, one to have a starting point and then a larger one that will drill out the hole for the actual magnet there and uh, gluing them into place with super glue there. Alright, so I will show you when this part is completed and then we'll start to move on to priming the model kit. So here we now have the magnets in place. Uh, I have the four round ones along with this horizontal one. Uh, when I initially um, attached the cockpit onto the fuselage it actually would droop because when I added this piece it added more weight. So that's why I added this horizontal one here for extra support. This is the adjoining side here. You can see the magnets in place. There is one missing. Uh, I ran out of the round one, so I'd have to go back to the hardware store and get some more tomorrow. Uh, but you can see the horizontal uh, magnet here as well. I cut open this area here because this is where the battery and the switch is gonna slip into. So that'll allow us access when we wanna light up the cockpit. We just pull it off, turn on the switch, and put it back into place. So let me go ahead and slide this on. like so. Just put it back here for balance and there you go. Okay guys, the model is coming along. Uh, as you can see, I've primed now this section. I wanted to kind of see how the uh, paint would lay onto the surface there. Uh, at first I did have some issues with this section here. I had to resand it and reapply it, but um, yeah, it's coming along okay. I am using Tamiya's white primer. Uh, I usually use gray primer, but I ended up buying white this time by mistake, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. But one thing I did do is also use an adhesion promoter. Um, this is something that you can lay onto a surface uh, to, as the name implies, um, help the paint adhere better. Um, in the past, I've worked with resin kits where I've had problems with the paint uh, coming off, and hopefully that will solve that issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here for now. I don't wanna make these videos too long, so this ends part one. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me as usual on my YouTube channel or at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. So I will see you then in part two. Thanks again for watching. Take care.